In previous lecture, we started analyzing this fundamental digital control system structure, where we have a plant, which is a continuous time linear time invariant transfer function. We have a controller, which perfectly uh, ideally works in discrete time domain. And this controller interfaces with real world with, uh, via a zero order hold operation and sampling operation. Okay, so we first show that we can transform this digital control system, which has continuous and discrete components, into a purely discrete time system. Okay, where everything, including the input and output signals and uh, transfer functions, are all discrete domain. And G of C is the discretized uh, structure of zero order hold and the plan transfer function. Okay, then we started solving an example where uh, we assume that G plant of S is equal to 1 over S plus 1, and with zero order hold, G of C takes this following form. Okay, so 1 minus e to power minus 1 divided by z minus e to the power minus 1. And we assume that for now our controller is a simple proportional controller. OK, before going to analyze the uh, digital control system, let's analyze what happens if we have a plant with the structure, 1 raised plus 1, simple first order plant, and a, a proportional controller, so this, OK, plus, minus, this is R of t. We have a P controller, our plant is 1 over S plus 1, our output is equal to Y of T. So let's draw the root locus. Okay, so root locus, so let's change the color. We have a single pole, okay. Since we have a single pole, our root locus is simply like this, okay, in this direction. When K is increasing, our poles is going towards negative infinity. Okay, so if we draw the uh, step response of the system, so qualitatively we get the same structure. Okay, it will look like this, right? Okay, so start from zero and goes to some state state value. If I increase k, I simply change the uh, structure a little bit. So increasing k uh, will increase the convergence speed, so it will close if the bridge its state state value and faster. So if I decrease k, it will be something like this. Okay, so the take home message is for a simple first order plant, which is, has a stable pole, the structure is always same for the same k value. Of course, transient performance can change a little bit, convergence time, convergence might change, but the behavior is always same. But we know that for a second order plant with a P controller, we can obtain a different things such as over damped, critical damped, and under the response. Okay, now let's analyze uh, the problem from the discrete time perspective. Okay, let's, let's clean this. Okay, so same plant, but now we have a, a discrete time P controller instead of a digital P controller, a con uh, continuous time P controller. Okay, good. So, and let's start with, for example, k is equal to 0 0.1. Okay. So in this case, t of z will be equal to 0 0.063 divided by z minus 0 0.3. Okay, so this is t of z, and you want to compute the step response. Uh, y of z will be equal to z times 0 0.063 divided by z minus 1, z minus 0 0.3. That's good. So everything is uh, fine. Uh, it's no big deal. And what we need to do is we need to compute y of k, take the inverse transform. It will be something like this. 0 0.09, 1 minus 0 0.3 to the power k. Okay, we know that k is greater than or equal to 0. So if we draw the step response, this is k, this is y of k. If we, it will look like this. Okay, so it will... I don't know, something like this. It will reach to its that state. So let's get the final result. Uh, I computed the output using MATLAB. So this is y of k, this is k. Okay, so it's a typical response. So if I fill in the blanks, and if I try to estimate the transient, uh, no, continuous time response, I will obtain something like this for the system. Okay, so, and as you can see, this is very similar to what we accept with a continuous time plant and continuous time P controller. So we do the same thing. 
we get a similar result. Okay. Uh, as you can see, since our k is very small, our steady state value is very little. So we have a like steady state error is, which is approximately equal to 90%. Okay. So in continuous time systems, what we do is if the steady state is very low, like or uh, uh, steady state error very high, in order to increase it, we generally increase k. Let's do the same thing. Okay, so let's do it here. And increase k to y. Okay, so so let's remember to continuous time system. So if I increase k, what happens? I improve my steady state performance and I also improve my transient performance. Okay. And it will be the same thing, same structure, no overshoot, no undershoot, only faster convergence speed. Okay, so let's compute y of c in this case, which will be equal to 0.063 z divided by c minus 1, z minus 0.3. Okay, so no, it's not true, almost true. Okay. So 0 0.63, so which is a better statistic, it is minus 0 0.3. Okay, as you can see, it's 0 0.3. No, it's plus or for that, so I did mistakes. Okay, 0 0.26. Okay, so so the gain changed. Okay, there is no big deal, but the pole location has changed. Okay, so in the previous case, pole was here, 0 0.3. And now it is equal to 0 0.26. So I change the pole, and at the output, I should obtain something like this to the power k, which can be equal to minus 1 to the power k, 0 0.26 to power k. So what is this? For even and odd numbers, it will change the sign. So I should observe some sort of oscillator behavior. So y of k is equal to approximately 0 0.5 to one minus 0 0.26 to the power k. k is greater than or equal to 0. So if I draw the response, I obtain a behavior which looks like an underdog response that we observe in continuous time systems. But the problem is our plant is first order. Okay, it's even first order in discrete domain, but I obtain a behavior which is typical to second order systems in continuous time systems. Okay, so this is the first difference. Now we started observing different things that we didn't expect in continuous time systems. So our intuition started to fail. Okay, so let's try to uh, predict the continuous time response. Okay, so this is y of k. So Let's try to draw y of t. So maybe it really looks like a second order continuous time system. Okay, so because this discretization and zero order hold, of course, changing the system. So this is an expectation, right? Okay, so let's look at the result. And I obtained this result using Simulink, which also gave whole continuous time out. As you can see, at the sampling instant, we observe non smooth behavior. So it's not typical, it's not really similar to overdone case in continuous time system. It's quite different. It's changing sharply, especially during the transitions when a sampling time ticks. So our behavior is hybrid. It really doesn't look like an LTI continuous time system. Okay, so it shouldn't like because our uh, structure is more complicated than you expect in a continuous time control system. Okay, look, but still. At least this is stable. As you can see, by increasing K, we improved steady state performance to 50%. Okay, it's stable. There's an overshoot. It's fine. It may be fine, may not be fine. Okay, or we can design different kind of controllers to suppress this overshoot. At least we obtain a stable behavior, a better steady state for performance, and it's as you can see, it converged to steady state faster, which is approximate four seconds. It was previously, uh, I don't know, seven, eight seconds or something like that. Okay, so uh, the biggest uh, disadvantage of a digital controller is now, as you can see, uh, they have overshoot even if your plant is a first order system. Okay, good. So let's change K again and increase K further. Okay, so because 50 
person steady state error still not good so i can do better i should do better and let's change k to a weird thing and i will tell you why so e power minus one one minus e to power minus one okay so this is a special k and you will see that so if i compute y of c is equal to 137 z divided by z minus one here it comes z plus one okay so i have two poles one is coming from the step input and one is minus one so at the uh, homogeneous response or general solution i have one to the power of k which is one and minus one to the power k so this is constant this is nothing fancy but what is one minus minus one to the power of k it is changing its direction at each step minus one one minus one one so it's an extreme change so if i compute y of k i can see that this is equal to 0 0.7 approximately one minus minus one to the power k okay so this has two values zero one zero one so my y k is equal to this zero it is 1.37 or something like that no it should be okay no uh, yes it should be one uh, yes my uh, it is 1.4 something like that okay so 0 1.4 0 1.4 0 1.4 it is oscillatory but moreover it is an extreme oscillatory behavior it changes rapidly at each sampling instant going from max to min max to min and in general, if you have a behavior like this, which is bad for your system, it's jumping in between two extremes in one sampling instant. Okay, so if I draw the output, it won't be smooth, similar to the previous case. So it will have sharp corners, which is also worse because it's not differentiable, which means that it is really bad for your system, for your controller, for your circuits, and other kind of things. Okay. So, when k is small, we obtain a very expected behavior compared to our intuition from continuous step systems. I increased k to zero, uh, 1, from 0 0.1 to 1. Now I obtain an oscillatory but stable convergent behavior. I increased k further and I obtain a purely oscillatory behavior. And it is Worse than a sinusoid in a continuous time system, it's like tick tock, it's like a clock. Tick tock, minimum, maximum, minimum, maximum. It's really terrible. Okay, so if I further k, you may expect that it will be unstable, and it is true. I will not cover it in this lecture, but it's true that if you further increase k, it will be unstable. So with the same plant, same controller, if everything works in continuous domain, everything is smooth and nice. So increasing K, increasing state performance and transit performance. Now what's happening? By increasing K, we are somehow increasing state state performance from this to this, but at some point we start to, to obtain marginal stable oscillatory extreme behaviors. Okay, so from this take-home message, we can say that, okay, so digital control is bad. It's not true, but it is different. Or uh, with the same simple structure, by changing gain, we can obtain substantially different behaviors. This is the take home message. Now I will show one more example, okay? So let's go here. And I will change K to a different special K. Okay, so let's look at here. And K is equal to what? So, okay, this. E to the power minus one, one minus E to the power minus one. Uh, so this K is like, below than the oscillatory behavior but higher than the uh, minimum k okay? so if i obtain y of c i obtain 0 0.37 divided by z minus one okay so i have only one pole as you can see as opposed to two poles so what's happening here okay so as you can see it's not very nice right okay or it can be nice i don't know it depends on your uh, intuition or your perspective. Okay, so what's happening is if I compute y of k, 
it is equal to 0 0.37 times u k minus 1. This is the steady state value. If I draw it, I don't need to even plot it with MATLAB. At 0, it is equal to 0. This is unit step function. And at 1, it is equal to 0 0.37. At 2, it's the same. 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 It goes like this. So third, 0 0.37 is the steady state value of this system. And it reached its steady state value in one step or one sampling time. It's one second for this example. Okay, so a system reaching its steady state value in finite time means that the speed of the system, conversion speed of the system is infinity. Okay, it's infinity. In continuous time systems, if you have a continuous time plant, especially if it's a linear time unit plant, and if you have a continuous time controller, okay, if it's an LTA controller, you always reach in state state value in infinite amount of time. You get very close, you can be very fast, but it's always infinity. So T convergence, so it's not the setting time, it's T convergence is infinity. But now, I can reach my set state state value in finite time, which means that my speed is infinitely many faster from any possible continuous time controller. And we call this behavior as that beat. That beat. So the name is very like radical. It's true because so it's a special class of controllers, okay, such that the behavior of the closed up system reach its state state value in finite time. So what we do is we technically convert all of the system into a FIR, finite impulse response system. So if we give an impulse, it reaches to zero in finite time. If we give a step, it will reach its state state constant value in finite time. Okay, so this is a desirable behavior from a digital control system if you ignore the noise in the system and uh, noise in the signals. Okay, so it's a different story. So that bit control has some caveats and problems, okay? But in general, if you ignore these facts, in terms of transient performance, that bit control is the best thing that you can obtain from a control system. So a digital controller can be okay and similar to your continuous time controller. Okay, so it can be okay, but maybe you can observe some unwanted things such as overshoot that you may not obtain with the continuous time controller, but speed can be fine and good. It can be very bad such that it can be marginal stable or purely oscillatory, which is not possible or uh, not, not easy to obtain a continuous time control. So this is an unwanted behavior or your system can behave which is not even possible to achieve with the continuous time control. It can be super good. So digital control system analysis and design is harder and different than continuous time control systems. Okay, so we will carry some of the intuitions that we obtain in Trio the course, but only this simple example. One of the simplest plants, okay, so let's go here. Okay. 1 over S plus 1, simple first order plan with a simple digital controller, P control, which technically acts very similar to the uh, continuous uh, time control part. But because of we have a sampling zero order hold and everything is now digital, such that we have continuous and discrete parts fused to each other, we can obtain substantially different uh, quality behaviors that we don't observe in a simple continuous time controller.